so glad you could join us for worship today. We're beginning a journey through the passage of scripture from Micah 6.8. God has told you, human one, what is good and what the Lord requires of you to do justice, to embrace faithful love, and to walk humbly with your God. God has told you, human one, what is good. What is good? Today we're going to stop and rest in that place and think about what is good. To think about those things, to think about those actions, to think about those being that help us to experience what is good. Let us pray. God, you come to us and show us what is good. You have shared with us the good that is to be found here on earth and the good that we can do. Help us to experience that goodness as we settle in to worship you today. Amen. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before God with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul? God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness God called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. 
The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. A few weeks ago, one of my minister friends um, shared how she loved this movie, My Octopus Teacher, and suggested we all watch it. Um, but it took me a few weeks to, to finally turn it on, and I watched My Octopus Teacher on Netflix. And in this movie, Craig Forrester, uh, a documentary filmmaker, was going through some struggles in his life. Um, he sensed that he was not sure what his purpose and meaning was and what he needed to do. And so he wanted to get back to himself. And to do that, he returned to that place from his childhood that used to energize him and excite him and just reminded him of all that was beautiful and good in the world. He lived off of Cape Town in South Africa and spent a lot of his time swimming in the pools and the ocean right along the beaches there, especially in the kelp forest. And he started learning how to dive and dive um, not with scuba gear, but learning how to dive so that he could be just him down under the water. And he's in an interview he did, he talked about how it took him a very long time to learn how to dive so that he didn't need the wetsuit to help keep him warmer and didn't need the oxygen. But he learned eventually how to stay under the water in those cold temperatures. And the movie is his relationship with this octopus. And every day he goes to visit this octopus and learns these amazing things about what octopus can do, how they live their life, how they protect themselves, how they feed. Like she, 
the octopus um, usually fed on crabs, but she came upon a lobster and she had to change her style of hunting in order to eat the lobster. And it showed how he, how she adapted to her environment, how she could change the color of her skin to escape predators, how when the pajama shark was following her and chasing her, she ended up tricking him multiple times by swimming through the, the kelp forest, by finally latching onto his back as he swam until he swam to a spot where she knew she could hide. She would disguise herself by covering herself all with all sorts of shell and sea bottom debris so that people, so that the predators wouldn't find her. And Forrester says of this, what she taught me is to feel that you are part of a place, not a visitor. And that's a huge difference. Today we're talking about good. In our scripture passage, which we will be following for the next few weeks, we're going to deal with each of the sections. And the first section I wanted to talk about is God or the prophet asks, human one, you know what is good. But what does good mean? In Hebrew, the word here is used tov. And can you think of that passage that uses tov so much over and over again? It tells us a little bit about what the word means. I'm sure you remember Genesis 1. It's the creation count from a priestly order. It's this litany of what was created. And at the end of each of the creations, God calls each word tov, good. God calls each word good, beautiful, working the way it was meant to be. In Genesis 4 and 10 and 12, 18, 21 and 25, each time the trees and the birds and the sky and the ocean and the fish and the dirt and the sea and the land and the bugs, each time anything is creation, at the end of it, God says to each, it's good. It's good. It's beautiful. It's working the way it's created to. And then God ends that beautiful litany of creation by creating humanity. And when God looks at this creation as it is finished, God looks back over everything, including humanity, and calls everything very, so very good, very beautiful, very working the way it was created to. The next time, we encounter the word tov in a way that is truly meaningful is in the birth story of Moses. In this version of the story, Moses is born early and he is pronounced good. So in that case, when Moses is born early and pronounced good, the meaning of the word may be something like viable, that, that Moses, even though premature, even though too little, even though most babies that little may not make it, this baby is pronounced good, is pronounced viable. Moses, good, from the moment of birth. So then when we get to our scripture from Micah, we encounter the prophet telling us that God is putting humanity or the gathered people, the gathered religious folk on trial. That they have gathered to perform a rites and rituals. And Micah comes into their midst and invites creation to judge this encounter. And the people in this encounter say, how can we come before you? What way should we approach you, God? Can we bring you our offerings? Can we bring you our burnt offerings? Can we bring you what will please you? 
can we give you what is needed to get rid of our sins, blot out our transgressions, transgressions. And the prophet says, oh mortal one, oh human one, God has told you what is good. What is good? What is good? How do we decide what is good? If we're using the Bible, the Bible, especially the first part in the Hebrew scriptures, teaches us about good and bad, about the things of God and the things not of God, and lays out a law and an order that shows us a way that will help us to connect and be closer to God follow what is good. And in this scripture, Micah says, what is good? What is required of you? You know what is required of you. To live justly. To love kindness. And to walk humbly with God. What is good? We're going to explore those words in depth over the next few weeks. But this week, I just want to stop with that sense of what is good. I mean, in that movie that I was telling you about at the beginning, where we see that octopus's life, what we experience and feel through that film is goodness. We experience beauty. We experience creation working the way it was meant to be, working the way it was created to be. That octopus was created in all its wonderful, miraculous beauty. It was created good. And that video invites us, that movie invites us into this journey that allows us to see that good. To see what is well formed, what is well wrought, what is well crafted, what is beautiful and viable and good. And maybe this week, as we stop here and stay with what is good, when we see a world outside our doors that doesn't seem to be working the way it was created to, that doesn't seem beautiful, that we need to, in the midst of seeing that, in the midst of hearing the pain suffered by all sorts of people. People who are experiencing climate change that is transforming the way they can live and the places where they can live. Governments that aren't taking care of their people, that are allowing people to be hungry, that are allowing people to starve, that are allowing people to be hurt. We see the evil that is out there when people are shot and killed. We see the evil that is out there when governments refuse to do what is right and good. We see all the things that are bad and unbeautiful and they're coming to us at a rapid click, at a rapid place, as we see such unkindness and such injustice. And so this week, I invite you to Stop. When you're experiencing that sense of being pulled farther and farther into the evil and the bad and the unbeautiful, the ugly, to stop and experience what is good, what is working the way it was created to. To stop and experience Tov, to experience the goodness of creation, to experience the beauty that you can find in an octopus being an octopus, in a flower blooming, in the leaves changing color. To stop and breathe deep and experience what is good and beautiful and working the way it was created to. Amen.
As we settle into prayer today, I invite you to breathe in deeply and to release your breath. I invite you to breathe in goodness and breathe out love, goodness, love, goodness, love. God, at the beginning you created all and saw that it was good, light and dark, stars and moon, earth and water, plants and animals, and it was good, very good. At our beginning, God created, you created us and saw we are good, unique and irreplaceable, loved and wanted, good, very good. God, help us look around as you did to see the good. Help us to see the trees turning colors, the last flowers blooming, the stars shining at night, the smile on the one you love. God, show us how to be good, the good you speak to us of. Help us to act justly. Help us to act kindly. Help us to walk with you. God, we stop now to ask you to ask your love to surround those we love, our family and our friends. We ask your love to surround those dear to us who are hurting or sick. We ask your love to surround those we love who have left this earth. May you draw close to our prayers and may your will be done as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for spending time in worship with us today. If you'd like to support our ministry, please visit our website, stpaulshinkley.org, where you can make a donation online. Let us pray. O oh God, you have filled the earth with good things and invited us to share freely in the blessings of life. By sharing our gifts with others, we proclaim your goodness. May we use these offerings to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. Amen. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. And may this week you go out and find the good. May you see all that is good and true and beautiful. Amen. <laughs>